Hey, what's going on, my friend? It's Jeff Newbert from ChasingStrength.com. And in today's video, we are going to finish off our series on the five levels of kettlebell training. And today specifically, we're going to answer a subscriber question about the difference in level five workouts between complexes and chains. Now, this is a relatively simple yet long topic when we flush it out. I've written an entire book on this before and then several follow-up books. Uh, so we are going to keep this as simple as possible in this video. All right. So here we go. Now, a complex is a series of compound exercises performed sequentially with the same weight, in this case, a kettlebell or a pair of kettlebells, and it's done without rest between sets. Okay. That means all the reps for one exercise are completed before moving on to the next exercise in the sequence. All right. A compound exercise is an exercise, for example, that uses multiple joints. So a squat would be a compound exercise. In contrast, an isolation exercise would be something like leg extension or leg curl, all right, or a biceps curl. Okay. So an example of how we would use this with kettlebells is we do five swings followed by five cleans followed by five presses. So that's a complex. Now, a chain is slightly different and has a very similar outcome, which we'll talk about here shortly. Let's get to the difference first. Now, a chain is a series of compound exercises, just like a complex, performed sequentially, again, just like a complex, with the same weights, a kettlebell or a pair of kettlebells, again, in this case. But each exercise is performed only once before the sequence is repeated or started again. Each time the sequence is performed, it's considered one rep, all right? So, what does that look like? Instead of doing five swings, five cleans, and five presses all in a row, you do one swing, one clean, and one press, and you'd repeat that would be one rep, and you'd repeat that five times. Okay. So one swing, one clean, one press equals one rep. You'd repeat that for as many reps as prescribed. And in, in the case of the previous complex, we would do that five times. Make sense? All right. So Complexes typically create more what we call local muscle fatigue, and that's where the muscles that are being used get fatigued, right? So, and that's before you're that's because you're performing consecutive reps of each exercise. So, the example would be if you were doing swings, cleans, snatches, front squats, and presses in a complex, and you had five reps of everything. So, my grip my forearms and my upper arms and my shoulders and my upper back are being taxed for about 15 reps in a row, assuming I did five reps of each exercise. All right. And then I would rest them by placing the kettlebells in the rack and doing five squats and then pressing, doing five presses overhead. Right. So there's 15 reps in a row where I'm biasing those muscle groups followed by 10 reps in a row where I'm not right now, the chains by complex, they spare that lo local muscle fatigue. All right. Because we're spreading those reps evenly across the body as a whole, right? So the system as a whole is taking on the fatigue versus just local body parts. Does that make sense? Now, typically because of this, you can do more total work. There's those air quotes again from previous videos or work measured by the numbers or the volume of work done, like sets times reps times weight in each training session using chains compared to complexes, okay? But that's not necessarily a fair apples to apples comparison. It's more of an apples to orange comparison because of the of what's going on inside the body, okay? So, so what would be going on inside the body? Well, complexes typically because of that local muscle fatigue, right, um, create a lactic acid response, which as we know, or maybe we don't know, but lactic acid is broken into two parts. One is hydrogen ions and the other is lactate, which is later used for fuel. Okay. And in the presence of lactate, your body releases growth hormone and growth hormone is a powerful hormone for building muscle and burning fat. All right. Now there's way less of a lactic acid response in chains. So you don't get nearly as much of a growth hormone response from chains as you do from complexes. So the complexes, when compared to the chains, right? So if I got complexes in this hand and chains in this hand, the complexes traditionally are better 
for burning fat and building muscle. And the chains are traditionally better for building strength or strength endurance and uh, building your general conditioning. Does that make sense? Now, what I'm not saying is that chains can't build strength endurance, or excuse me, complexes can't build strength endurance and can't build conditioning or strength. Okay. And I'm not saying that chains aren't good for fat loss and muscle building. I'm saying there's a bias between the two. Okay. So again, complexes, bias, fat loss and muscle building, chains, bias, strength, strength, endurance, conditioning. Does that make sense? All right. Now, how do you structure your complexes or chains? Very simply, right? You can use as little as two exercises or as many as I've seen, I've seen them as long as 10 exercises. Personally, I think that's too much. I don't recommend any more than five or six exercises per complex or chain. And that's just because you end up working for too long. And so, right, the the cons outweigh the pros. Pretty much it just becomes a, a game of suffering. And how long can I hold on, right? So you're not really training much of anything. You just get tired and fatigue takes over. Your technique gets sloppy. And then generally speaking, bad things can happen because injuries generally occur in a state of fatigue. Okay. So if you want to, if you want to test yourself or test your metal, like some people like to do with complexes and chains, don't do it. Go do a ruck, right? Or a sled drag or something like that. Something that's non-technical. So again, back to the structure, kind of got lost in the weeds there down a couple of rabbit holes, but, uh, you know, I, I just alluded to a very simple structure. The simplest of structures is a two exercise complex. You could use the clean and the press, for example. So you'd perform all your cleans first, then your presses. And again, that's a complex. If you alternate between your cleans and your presses, you'd be performing a chain. Now uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty and just talk about the, the differences between those, those uh, the complexes and the chains with those two exercises, for example, and why you might want to choose one the complex over the other, the chain or vice versa. And that's because the difference in the two is as follows. When you're doing the complex, right? If you're doing your cleans, that's going to jack your heart rate up. I believe that's a scientific term, jack your heart rate up. Okay. So your need for oxygen and energy is going to increase. And then once you're performing your presses, you're actually in a state of fatigue, right? Because of that mild lactic acid accumulation that we we're talking about earlier. This state of fatigue makes the presses harder, okay? So from a programming perspective, we can actually use lighter weights than normal for the presses because we're going to be using them in the presence of fatigue, all right? So again, if I didn't mention it before, this makes your presses feel harder. In the chain, okay, you are using the clean to set up the following press, what uh, many people don't know is that a properly performed clean, right, creates, for lack of a better term, a force wave, right? It's called ground reaction force. So there's, when you clean the bells and they land on top of you, a wave of force goes down through your body, through your feet, into the ground, bounces out of the ground, back up into your body, and it has to exit somewhere. And if you time this correctly, it'll, it'll exit vertically out of your body and you can time it with your presses and press up overhead with that force wave, all right? Does that make sense? And so you can actually use that force wave to make you stronger, all right? So that's why you would use chains instead of complexes if you wanted to make that press a little stronger, all right? All right, well, I think that pretty much covers the basics between complexes and chains. As you can see, it can be kind of complex, right? God, that's, that's a horrible pun. I couldn't help it. I just had to put that in there because I'm punny like that. I, dang, dang, man, I just did it again. Anyway, you get, get my drift, right? Again, this can be kind of complex for some people and it makes their head hurt trying to figure these things out. Like how, which, which do I do complex or chain? How do I put this stuff together? How do I build them? What's best? So on and so forth, right? And then you end up doing nothing because you just or a big ball of confusion. So if that's you and you don't want to figure this stuff out, I've got you covered. All right. So there, I'm going to put a link in here uh, in the description below the video, and you can grab one of my programs, which is just made up of nothing but complexes and chains, right? So it's multiple programs based around complexes and chains. It's not just one. So I'm not going to pigeonhole you into one program. You pick 
one of the 20 that you like the best and you go ahead and do it for the next six to nine weeks. All right, so I'll leave that below the link. Hey, if you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, go ahead and click the like button, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you found it really helpful, send the link over to one of your friends or all your friends, right? Well, maybe not all your friends because they might be somewhat annoyed and they may not use kettlebells like you. But anyway, the ones you do send them to, have them click the like and subscribe button. Let's grow this channel and uh, let's get this information out because I know it's helping a lot of guys because I'm getting a lot of feedback from it. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time.